footing design may be the most complicated part of an addition or any type of homeowner project for that matter. Because once you get up out of the ground, I mean, everything kind of becomes pretty straightforward as far as framing is concerned. I mean, maybe sizing your headers. But when it comes to designing your footing, it's all based on your soils, right? As a homeowner, I mean, you might know, well, I've got some rock in there, or I've got some clay, I got some sand in there, but do you really know? And so then it dives into kind of how it can get complicated as far as, well, how much weight's dropping down on these footings, how wide do they need to be based on the soils so that the soils can hold the weight of the building. I'm going to go through uh, the code reference. We're going to just talk about just footing design in this build or in this video. And hopefully it will get to you to where you need to go. I actually have from where I live, we actually have a footing calculator that I'm going to walk through the steps on that. I'm going to go through the code with you. Um, but if you are getting a permit, if there's one required, I would try to design it up the best you can and then obviously have your plans examiners look at it and make sure that it's correct. Uh, maybe you've already gotten your permits and so this hard part is done for you. They've already done it and that's awesome. Um, but if you haven't, uh, you're going to want to kind of just kind of go through this and make sure that you got your footing sized properly. It's a, it's a big thing because if it's undersized, you don't want to get any of that settling or anything like that. So let's talk about different types of footings and minimum compressive strengths uh, of your concrete. So I'm working more towards concrete. That just seems to be what most people use these days. But you can build a footing out of all kinds of different stuff. So I'll, I'll show you here. So this would be footings, right? All exterior walls shall be supported on continuous, solid, or fully grouted masonry or concrete footings, crushed stone footings, wood foundations, or other approved structural systems. So if you were compelled enough, I, you could probably build a footing out of wood. As long as you live in an area where they accept it and your building department's okay with it, you could probably do it. If you have crushed stone, you might be able to compact it down and meet a specific compaction rate and build your walls right on top of it. Uh, but when it comes to minimum specified compressive strength of concrete, we're talking about basement walls, foundations, which include concrete or other concrete not exposed to the weather, which is typical footing, right? Footings are going to be below grade or at least 12 inches, right? 12 inches below grade or where whatever our frost depth is. And so when it comes to footings, no matter what the weather potential is, it's 2,500 PSI after 28 days. So that's pretty straightforward. That's, that should be very simple to meet. You could just, when you call in your concrete, just say, hey, I need to make sure that I meet 2,500 PSI, which usually, at least where I'm at, is just five sack concrete. You say, hey, I just need so many yards of five sack concrete. And you could just off the cuff say, hey, this will this will hit 2,500 PSI, right? And they'll tell you. And I, you should blow it out of the water if you got five sack concrete. That's pretty typical in my area. That's what guys use for their foundations and their foundation walls is five sack. And, and they don't have any problems. They actually are compressive strengths up into 4,000 sometimes. And so it usually is pretty good. So that would be the concrete side of things. Then it's what type of footing are you putting in? And then um, here are some different designs that you can end up doing. So here would be like a mono pour. A lot of people use this on a garage. You know, they just pour the slab and they do the a thickened footing around the outside. Uh, this would be like an interior strip footing. So maybe you have an interior bearing wall in your addition and they will just pour it as part of the slab. Here would be, um, you know, maybe they poured just the footing and then they did a masonry stem wall or foundation wall on top of it. Here would be like kind of your typical, right? You got your footing and then you got your stem wall on top of it. And then here would be, well, I just want to monopore all of it. I've actually seen people monopore something like this. They form the footings and then they uh, put their... Um, straps across here to hold their footing boards and then they actually built their wall on top of it and then they they capped these so that the concrete doesn't come out the top 
and they poured it like that. So I've seen monopores. If you're trying to save on a pump, maybe you're in the backyard and pumps are expensive now and you want to be able to do it in one shot. Well, you probably want to monopore it. But those are some different ideas when it comes to footing design on different ways that you can go. We've got here's like a standard footing uh, foundation wall detail. So it's talking about two number fours in the bottom and then they have these hook bars coming out of it for rebar. And this is just a standard detail. So if you're doing drawings for your particular uh, project, you could probably take something like this and you could draw it with a pencil and just show kind of how your footing set. Um, here they're only calling for one foot six to grade and then here's your six inches above. Well, for my area, this would need to say two feet because I'm two feet below grade for frost protection. So let's say what we're going, we've got, we know we need 2,500 PSI. We're going with concrete foundation, concrete footings. We know that. Um, but now we got to figure out well, what size do we do? Okay. Well, here's where things get a little confusing is here's the presumptive load bearing values of foundation materials so it all comes down to your soils you've dug down to native you've dug down to undisturbed um, uh, ground and now it's like well what do i have for materials most people you know you're not going to be sitting on bedrock and so you're going to have kind of a, a mix of some of this stuff well it's like if you don't know for sure then always stick with 1500 right clay sandy silty clay clay silts i mean i'm not a soils engineer and i if you're not either i would just always stick with 1500 if you were to go in there and you were to say oh well i've got this and i've got 3000 uh, pounds of uh, load bearing pressure per square foot on my soil that your building department might say well prove it you know or show it to me or um versus if you just say well i I don't know what I got. I'm going with 1500. It's worst case scenario. I'm going to design it that way and move on, right? You might need a little bit extra concrete. Your footing might need to be a little bit bigger, but at the end of the day, I think it'll make your project move smoothly and faster if you just stick with 1500. And so then inside the code book, they actually have footy, a footing calculation chart. Here's the problem though. Let me blow this up. Nowadays, most people don't have center bearing walls, right? You're, you've, if you've got a new house or if you're building an addition, usually they want to span from end to end, right? They want vaulted ceilings. Uh, they don't want any interior bearing walls splitting up the space. And so the bearing points are actually the exterior wall. Well, this particular chart calls for a center bearing wall in all of these designs. So here's a slab on gray with just a roof, a crawl space where it's holding the floor and the roof, and then here it's a basement where it's holding the floor and a roof, right? Well, a lot of times now you don't have that center bearing footing. So that wall goes away. That means this roof and this floor are bearing all the way across. That's what happens a lot of times. Or a floor might just have a, a footing below it to hold the floor up mid span, but not the roof. Because you want that roof, you want that big open space. So this particular uh, chart may not fit what you're looking for, but if it does, you know, by all means use it. And so first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna find out what your snow load or your roof live load is. And that's something you'd have to check with your building department. You find out what that is, and then you're gonna jump down to whichever section in this chart that you are. And then you're going to find out, well, what are you building? A two-story slab on grade, a one-story crawl space, and then here's your load-bearing value for soils. So again, this is, we went with the load-bearing value of soil. We're going to stick with 1,500 just to be safe if we don't know for sure. And um, our snow load where I'm at is 30. So I would hop over here to 30. And if I was going to build a one story uh, with a crawl space, which I actually built one of these houses, I don't know, three or four years ago, we did a single story house. We didn't want any steps in it. We put it on a crawl space because I wanted to be able to get underneath and build a work or run wires if I forgot something. And so it would have been something like this. 
And so this is telling me at 1500 that I need a 13 by six footing. So 13 inches wide, six inches deep. So that's what that would tell me. So this might not work for you. That's why I wanted to jump over to our footing calculator. So let's look at this thing. I'm gonna try not to confuse you a little too, too much. So here's prescriptive continuous footing calculator based on the 2015 IRC. And here are the soil bearing pressure. So we always stick with 1500. And here's snow load of 30, which would be my area. Now maybe you're in uh, somewhere where your snow load's greater than that. You can go in here and type 40 in there. Um, your exterior light frame wood walls. So standard eight foot wall. Maybe you got higher walls. Maybe you went nine feet on your wall. Okay, and then you've got, well, what type of um, foundation wall do I have? Did I do a six inch wall or an eight inch wall? Most people do concrete. So I went in here and said, well, I need at least a two foot wall. If I was doing say a crawl space, maybe it's an eight foot wall. Maybe I've got an eight foot wall because I'm doing a basement and it's, I'm gonna do it out of a six inch, so it's gonna be six inches thick. And now we jump, jump into tributary loads. So let me talk a little bit about tributary loads and I'll show you the drawing that they've connected to this. But a tributary load is essentially how much weight that a particular floor or roof or some type of structure, that weight that a specific um, bearing point is picking up, right? So if you can imagine a house, let's just say a house is 30 feet wide, okay? And that floor spans 30 feet which in most instances floors only span about 15 feet, but for pretend, let's say it spans 30 feet. The roof spans 30 feet. Well, if you cut that in half, then that exterior wall on one side and the exterior wall on the other side is gonna pick up half of that weight, which means that one side's gonna pick up 15 feet worth of tributary load and the other side's gonna pick up 15 feet of tributary load. But let's say that there's a center bearing uh, footing for the floor. We've got 30 feet and we put a center bearing uh, wall in there to pick up the floor. And so then that is going to pick up half and half. So I'm trying not to confuse you here, but um, let's hop into the, the drawing or the calculator. So if we had 30 feet and we broke it in half, our tributary width is 15. Say we had a floor, and again, it spanned end to end, same thing, you'd be 15 feet. Well, if you did have a center bearing uh, uh, wall for your floor, now all of a sudden from bearing to bearing is 15 feet, and half of that is seven and a half. So I'm just gonna round up and put eight right there. So I scroll down, and so here is my continuous footing width. 19 by seven, that's what it's telling me I would need for a basement uh, house that's 30 feet wide where the exterior foundation walls are picking up the entire span of the, of the roof and it's picking up uh, the floor with a center bearing wall in it. So what if we took out the center bearing wall? What if we just said it was spanning all the way? So it's picking up half of it, doesn't change it. So you're okay. You wouldn't even need to change your footing size. It's just, well, is my floor too bouncy? I'm gonna put in a center bearing wall if I want to. If not, I don't have to change it. Down here, you have spread footings. So you'd have to actually figure out how much weight you have going on that um, if it's above 1,500 pounds. So let's just say you had a post on a deck, you found your tributary load and you found out how much that weighs and you said, well, it weighs you know, 3,500 pounds. Still good with 19.7. Let's just say it's 5,000 pounds. There it goes, it jumps, right? So you can play with that, this calculator a little bit, and it'll help you figure out what you need for your footing design. So that would be the footing calculator. If I go over here to instructions, I wanna make sure that you, I wanna make sure that you have a clear understanding of, of footing design. Cause like I said, it's the, in my opinion for a homeowner is the most complicated because it's like, what size do I need? And it's all based on your soils. If you get through this and you're like, I just don't want to deal with this, go down to your building department, ask them for help. They should be able to help you design it based on what it is that you're doing. 
But again, if you don't have that help, if they're not getting back to you, um, or, or you didn't need a permit, I'm hoping that this will help you out. So here are kind of the instructions. You can see how they've gone and done a little diagram here, and they've labeled each of them. So A, B, C, D, E, F. So F, G, and H, A, B, E, and I. It's telling you exterior heights. It's telling you where to pull your heights from. So when I went in there and said, well, I got nine foot walls on my little example, you say, well, where are you pulling that from? You can hop over here to the instructions, and it'll tell you. Here would be a center bearing wall, like I was saying, for your floor, right? So tributary load would be half of that. If you have center bearing here, then half of that is from here to here. Just say that's 15 feet. Half of it for tributary load is half of that, which would be seven and a half. Tributary load, if this is 30 feet, would be 15, right? It's half of it. This foundation is picking up half the load, and this foundation is picking up the other half of the load. And so you can scroll through this, and it'll help you work through that process of designing your footings. So my hope is, is that helps you out as far as designing your footings. Okay. You can use the charts in the, that are in the code book. You can use this footing calculator. You can go down to your building department, but just make sure they're big enough.